I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on vectors. One question which is extremely important for us to answer is why should we study vectors? Right? It's a lot of effort. Why should we study vectors? Well, let's think about it, right? We as humans are actually surrounded by so many forces around us, right? So, so if you look into the situation, we are bombarded with so many tasks to do, so many tensions around us, and so many forces. We really don't know what is going to be the resultant of these forces, correct? So, so what we don't know about these forces is the resultant or the result, right? We are juggling with so many things at the same time, right? So we have to take up a task here, a task there, connect them with another task, right? And these are so well connected with a fine thread. If you fail to do one, the system will collapse. Correct? So how do we maintain the equilibrium? That becomes extremely important for us. Now we always try to do some work. We put in a lot of effort. Let's say here's an object, which is our work to be done. We are trying to push it. Now, we actually make a lot of effort to move it, but a very little work is done by our effort. So, how do we make our work more efficient or analyze the work done? That is critical for an efficient life right so you are like working all around what do you see you want some action some output correct but what really happens it all goes tangential you expect something but all over the place and you're not even having an idea where the result is going to be right so what we saw here is that we really are working and twisting ourselves which we call as torque and we are not able to figure out the dynamics We work in one plane and get the result somewhere else or someone else get the benefit of our work. We are making sincere effort to reach the top of the sky. But what really happens? We fall down. We need to control the whole system here to understand and realize what is happening. Volumes of books may be required at times to understand and analyze the situation, right? But even then, it's kind of difficult to get it. Vectors, as you will soon realize, can help you understand all these situations very well. That is what I can say, right? So with vectors, we can actually analyze real life situations.
we can understand the chemistry of the things. And we can also provide description for physical quantities. That is where vectors come into position. We are able to project and provide directions. These are critical things which we are able to do with vectors. If we can't do all this, then we will be totally exhausted like carbon dioxide. But if we study vectors, then the life could be cool. So that is the result of vectors. So I hope you get enthusiastic about now learning about vectors. So in our chapters on vectors, we will learn how to work with all these forces, external forces, which are acting upon a point, how to analyze them and find a resultant. And if there is a dynamic system, how do we model it and find equilibrium? We will also see and understand what is the best way to get the work done. And if we are actually doing some work, we should be aware that where the output is going to come so that we can really benefit from them. Correct? The chemistry part? Well, it is always the molecules which a chemist is going to work with. Now, these molecules are attached with so many other things. We can actually find the angles between them and the bond strength. So, I hope you realize and appreciate the part which Vector plays in our understanding of the real life situation, modeling them and getting appropriate results. So, with that note, let's begin and open chapters on Vectors to solve all our problems. Thanks for watching and all the best.